want to break into product careers or transition into product careers. So you are in the right place to be able to do that. Um, and today we are kicking off, kicking off one of our new initiatives, which is a resume review initiatives. Um, so if you have not already, go into the Product Bud Slack and join the resume review channel where you can leave feedback on other people's resumes and post your own for feedback as well. Um, and besides that, oh gosh, I um, think I was supposed to leave that part for Henrika, but um, Henrika, why don't you kick it off um, with some more information about how today is gonna go. No, it's, it's totally okay. Um, you did a fantastic job. So welcome everyone again. Thank you for joining us on the, on a, late Saturday um, and you know this initiative it really came from um, hearing your thoughts we released a community pulse survey two weeks ago and to our surprise 96 percent of those who responded actually expressed interest for this initiative so um, when we send out surveys like that we really take your feedback into account and we strive to put it into action so Thank you for all those who filled it and who have spoken. So now we are delivering. And we think this is the perfect time to do this because of the fall recruitment season. It's approaching very soon. Um, so super excited to uh, launch this resume review initiative. And what better way to kick it off um, than doing a PM resume review workshop with these industry PMs that we have. And like what Grace said, join our hashtag resume review channel. Um, to not miss out on all of the fun um, throughout the summer after this kickoff. Um, okay, so a brief rundown of the agenda for today. Uh, we will not be doing a typical resume workshop where our presenters will tell you, you know, five things you need to have, five do's and don'ts on your resume. Like there's, there's enough of that that you can see on <laughs> the internet. Instead, we will have um, a little simulation so the first, for the first part, uh, we will have a 30 second resume screening where our um, speakers today who are hiring managers, who supervise PMs before and who recruit PMs um, will, will essentially screen resumes that we've picked from the community uh, in 30 seconds and we'll talk out loud whatever stands out in, in their in their head and will judge whether a certain resume will go towards the keep pile or the toss pile. And then for everything, for every resume that goes towards the toss pile, we'll take time to review um, and ask our speakers here to suggest key changes that could be made to those so that the next time after the revision, these can be con put into the consideration pile. And then we'll jump into Q&A in Slido um, and my team will be sharing the link to Slido on, on the Zoom chat, so keep an eye for that. But now, without further ado, I would like um, to call on our speakers to do a brief introduction of themselves. Um, let's start with Anastasia. Hi, everyone. Well, first of all, thanks, thanks Product Buds, for our, organizing such a great event. As, a, as, as mentioned, I think there's a lot of different, um, you know, different resume workshops and different resume sessions on, you know, on the internet that different groups are doing. But I think this is a really unique opportunity to, you know, see behind the scenes of what recruiters and hiring managers, their process is really like. So excited to be a part here. A little introduction to myself. Um, I'm a recent new grad from the University of San Francisco, did a marketing major and a CS minder. Um, so kind of been in the space, um, in the tech space for a while now, uh, but now currently working as a recruiter at Tesla within the internship programs team. Um, so this is, this is something I do on an everyday basis. So happy to share kind of what my process looks like um, and how maybe you guys can, um, you know, adjust your kind of thinking um, and adjust your processes when you're applying to jobs from a recruiter standpoint. Thank you, Anastasia. Now we'll go with Emma. Hi everyone, my name is Emma. Um, I'm very excited to be here and be a part of this event today. And uh, I am a senior product manager at Workday. Um, and I have been a product manager for about six years. And before that, I worked in IT. I won't tell you, you know, my school background because it was a long time ago. Um, but I, I was in your shoes at one point. I did break through from 
uh, you know, a different back background, trying to get into product management for the first time, went through a lot of different versions of my own resume. And now uh, I do spend a lot of time helping to recruit new product managers into our organization. So uh, excited for this event. Thank you, Emma. Um, I've personally worked with Emma during my time as an APM at Workday and she's amazing. Now, um, last but not the least, Calvin. Hey guys, uh, my name is Calvin. And uh, first of all, thanks for uh, having me here. Um, it's gonna be fun and interesting um, since usually when I get resume, um, it goes through a lot of filters already. <laughs> and then this time I'm actually filtering for people, so it's gonna be fun. Uh, but uh, I am, uh, I'm currently a lead product manager uh, at PayPal. Um, I, I manage a small um, group of uh, product manager there. Um, and prior to that, uh, I've been a engineering manager for, uh, for, different, uh, uh, for different Silicon Valley startups um, for the past um, eight years. Uh, and I transitioned over to product management about five years ago. So good to be here and, uh, and looking forward to, uh, to this event. Thank you. So how, how is everyone feeling? Are you super excited after hearing all of our speakers' bio? Um, let us know. Um, use that React feature there and you know, give us a thumbs up or a clap, depending on what you're feeling. Okay, so now we'll transition into the first part of the meat of this program, which is the 30 second resume screening simulation. Like what I said, I sourced nine resumes from the Product Buds community who RSVP'd for this event. So thank you everyone for submitting your resumes. And Anastasia, Emma, and Calvin, each of you will be given 30 seconds to decide whether each resume will go towards the keep pile or the not considered pile. And within that 30 seconds, please talk out loud your first impression, what's going through your mind in making that ultimate decision, whether a certain resume will be keep, will be kept or tossed. And this will be each for each resume will have like a, a job level category. So internship or time, which I will um, dictate as, as we go along. And once you hear this timer, did everyone hear that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, once you hear that timer, <laughs> that means 30 seconds is over and you have to um, stop and say your decision. And the intent of this exercise is to really show people here, candidates of, you know, how resumes are screened and once they hit that submit button and how they can make a positive first impression on recruiters and hiring managers to help them improve and revise their resumes. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen so we can see um, the pool of resumes. Okay. Can everyone see the Google Drive right now? Give me a Looks thumbs good. up if you can. Okay, so first resume um, we have is for Anastasia to review. And this candidate is applying for a PM internship position. Um, I will start the timer. Um, give me a second. Um, okay, one, two, three, timer starts now. All right, so looking at this resume pretty holistically from a, a big vantage point, it's pretty well formatted. Um, looking at the graduation date, they're eligible for graduation. Um, software engineering and design looks great. Um, overall format looks great. I will say looking at the top of the resume, some of the top um, real estate of resumes at the top. So for me, you know, relevant skills, I, you know, these are great that skills to have, but I don't really, you know, doesn't really tie into any past experiences. Um, so for me, this will probably be a pass for now. Um, I think it has great experiences, but um, just didn't catch my attention too much. Okay, thank you, Anastasia. Well, now this is going to we... be stressful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the you know, point, right? Fast, because, <laughs> yeah, as a job candidate, we've always been told, you only got seven seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds of the recruiter's time. So, you know, got to make that um, impression. 
So I'll pull up the second one. Um, really putting my speed reading to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you want me to zoom, zoom in or something. Can you zoom in, Henrika? Yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks. There. And then let me know um, if you want me to scroll down. Um, yeah, one, this... two, three. Timer starts now. <laughs> this is great. Thanks, Enrica. Uh, yeah. So first of all, it looks very clean, um, concise. I like the, the way that it's laid out. Um, work experience is first, which I, I always love to see if, um, especially if it's someone who is a new grad coming in, seeing that you've done some things and, and had some experiences is always really great. Um, I'm looking around and I think this resume is actually really cool because it shows someone who's has a more of a diverse background. They have a lot of different locations, Philippines. Oh, 30 seconds over already. Okay. I would keep it. You'd keep it. Okay. <laughs> so, 30 seconds so fast. Can I, is it, is it possible for to look at it and then, and then, and then talk about it later? Or do I have to like speak to it while I'm thinking? You have to speak to it while you're thinking. Yes. We'll, we'll go back to them, right? Yeah, maybe the ones we pass okay. we'll go back to, we are going back to. So maybe we don't go through, you know, if it's good, maybe we don't give it too many critiques and just more of a self-analysis of what you like. Yeah, so right. um, we will actually review the ones that are on the toss pile because those are the ones that are, that assuming they have problematic changes. Um, and we want to help, you know, correct those things so they go towards the keep pile. Yeah. Hey, Henrika, the resume that you put in keep just now um, was actually one for toss. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Wait, Emma, did you say it's a keep or a toss? Uh, I said keep. I think Anastasia said toss. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's go there. So toss. Next, Calvin, are you ready? Yeah, let's go for it. Um, I'm going to start the timer. Can you zoom in? Yeah. OK. Yeah, timer can you zoom in? OK. So first of all, I think this um, is a good layout, but um, it's a little bit overwhelming just because uh, it's a little hard to read. Um, I like that the person is working on working right now um, and looks like it's a lot of different experience um going down oh, i like his, i like that he's from uc davis so i am going to keep this one wow on time <laughs> <laughs> did you okay did you see that powerful connection there i'm not sure why you like the fact that he is in uc davis assumingly if you're an alumni there's that connection i am um, an alumni <laughs> see there you go so People, reach out to your alumni, use the LinkedIn alumni tool, and um, people who are alumni and who've been in the same school with you are, you know, more than willing to help you out. So that goes towards Keith. Okay, next round for Anastasia. And Henrika, can we actually give them 45 seconds? I think it might... Oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do 45 seconds. Um, okay. We can also, if, if we have more time, if, you know, we can also go through the good ones too, if maybe, I'm sure there's also, you know, recommendations we can make, but just yeah. let me know when to start, Enrica. Okay, yeah. I can start? Oh. Yeah, 45 seconds starts now. Okay, um, looking at the work experience more this time, um, I think they have some experience in technical systems, publications, marketing, marketing. So a lot of varied experience, which is great for product. Co-founder of their own company, it looks like, or app, which is always great initiative. Leadership, you know, has a lot of soft skills there. VP of design, great. I like how it focuses on the work experience first. So at the top of the real estate. Um, yeah, well experienced, well varied coursework they're about halfway through their schooling so it's a great time for an internship yep i would keep this one nice wow you have extra so extra oh extra time seconds. okay yeah uh, oh there you go. <laughs> keep but it's a keep okay that's really good so i think 45 seconds is good 
Um, next one for Emma, let me start the timer first and then I'll zoom it in. Um, okay, timer starts now. All right, once again, someone with a lot of different experience. Um, what the first thing that pops to my mind is there is a lot of space taken up, not a whole lot of white space, so it is a little busy, um, but that's just kind of a nitpick. Uh, Walmart e-commerce, that's a, a great name. Um, seeing some of these big names is also really good to see on these resumes. Uh, CarMax um, looks like University of Virginia, so someone from the, the East Coast, just like me. Uh, lots of different things, even some things going on at the same time. Uh, computer science, someone who's technical is always really valuable in the PM space. Um, and also a number of projects. It looks like leadership experience too. I love seeing uh, the leadership experience piece. So I would keep it. Thank you. Keep. Okay. Calvin, are you ready <laughs> for the next one? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Timer starts now. Okay, so first of all, um, looks like he has seven years of experience. I like the summary there. Um, there is a lot of skills uh, in A-B testing. I like it, agile product development lifecycle. I like that, user experience, I like that. So there's a lot of keywords that, um, that I like in there. Uh, work history, let's see. Uh, this product manager is current, well, it's a little too fast. <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. Never. Yeah, no worry, no worry. Snap beat. Okay. It's good. It's fine. It's good. There's engagement. That's that's good. I like I like to highlight the the key outcome there. Uh and then scrolling down. I would keep this one. Okay. I have a follow-up question there. Yeah. Two page resume, something controversial. <laughs> keep for yeah well for me for me well for me it's okay when i see multiple pages of resume it's okay um especially when the guy said when the person or the girl could be guy girl doesn't matter um but uh that person uh, said there's mm -hmm. seven years of experience so uh, so when you have a lot of experience i think it's okay to have uh, multiple pages of resume that's good Okay. On an internship side, I would recommend not to have a two-page resume just because if you're still a student, I think you can you can tighten it down to one page. Um, I'm sure you know all of you guys are clearly very well achieving if you're here on a Sunday, but try to keep it down um, to a one page. Um, and I think if there's also one thing I learned through my career is like someone was telling me if you can't keep a resume to one page, what does that show about your ability to kind of um, you know write concisely or uh, figure out the top bullet points of your past experiences. So something I learned, um, wanted to pass along. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's the nice thing um, about this is, we, you know, we have three different like industry leaders who are good at what they're doing and you can see diversity in perspective. And, um, you know, every, there's, there's universal way of how to write maybe a proper resume, but it's still very subjective at the end of the day. Okay, so our final rounds, um, I'll start the timer, set, start. And then, yep, Anastasia. Okay, um, first glance, it's a little dense, um, a lot to read. It looks like they are in their senior year um, or going into their senior year, have a lot of projects um, all over the place, both in fashion, and coffee, energy, consulting, a little bit, and they're also in biomedical field, a little bit confusing on what they're interested in or passion-wise or hobby, what they're focused in, RMware, marketing, logistics, research. It's kind of interesting because they're talking about social media, but they're doing biomedical engineering. I'd be interested to know kind of what this candidate could be in, but I think it could provide a variety of experiences and and kind of perspectives, but I'm not sure if it would be perfect for a PM role at this time. So I'll pass. Okay. Thank you. Hi, this is Yash. Uh, can I just have a quick follow-up question, Anastasia? Uh, I think we're going to go, go to questions, uh, Enrica, uh, yeah. maybe after or right. Should I answer now? Um, uh, yeah. So 
I'm not sure who was speaking, but we'll have um, follow-up questions towards the end in our Slido. And um, everyone can add their questions there or vote for um, the top questions because we'll only have like around 10 minutes. So if you see a question there from someone who um, you, you, you think you want to ask the same question, just vote so it gets to the top and it gets answered. Fair enough. Thank um, you. Otherwise, feel free to use the chat feature as well. We'll be monitoring and um, some of our speakers can see it. And while, they're, while it's not their turn, they'll be able to respond. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then, okay. So for Emma, we'll quickly start the timer. Okay, timer starts now. Uh, personally, I'm a fan of this layout. Um, it has a little pop of color. It kind of draws your eye. It looks a little different than the rest of them. So off the bat, I, I kind of like that. Uh, work experience. Um, I do like the, the layout. It shows me really quick um, the different types of experience. So it looks like uh, something in banking, a co-founder, um, a business analyst. So, so good um, background to become and break into the PM space. Uh, a couple of projects, which is really great. And at the bottom, it looks like education. Um, I also do like the certifications, interests, um, all of those as well. Uh, I feel like I uh, am leaning towards going into looking at more of these um, and reviewing them further. So another keep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. That's another, um, you know, controversial or big question topic, right? One layout, uh, one column or two column yeah or you know colors or no colors right but we'll dive into those um in our in the next segment so keep and then we'll head into our last resume which is for calvin and this resume is for a mid career um pm i'll zoom it in for you Okay, timer yeah. starts um, now. Okay, so first thing that, uh, oop, uh, okay. First thing that stood out is, um, it's good to see that the person's uh, um, still working at uh, auction.com. Um, it's a pretty well-known site, I used it before, so that's good. Um, project highlight, the one thing that I don't like here is um, the work experience of the project highlight with the pro I guess I'm assuming the project highlights highlighting the work experience there. I'm a little confused about this uh, layout there and he worked at PayPal before. So <laughs> I'm going to keep this one. Simply because he worked at PayPal and he was yeah. no, 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 and then there's Deloitte. So as I see PayPal, I see Deloitte, I see auctions. So, you know, just, I know that those are pretty well-known uh, um, company so okay. given the 45 second i'll keep it okay thank you so i want to uh hear a quick pulse check um from the community how is that exercise you know is it interesting seeing the perspectives of our speakers how they you know they have a very limited okay. amount of time to dig into all of these resumes and did you expect um, their reactions. Did you have the same reactions when you first saw your peers' resume up here? So let us know what you're thinking in the chat. Um, and then now we'll go towards the next segment of our resume review, which is now we'll be looking at the toss pile. And if time permits, we can also look at the key pile. But within the toss pile, we'll review a handful of resumes together. And Anastasia, Emma, and Calvin, now is the time for you three to engage in a round table discussion about how these resumes could improve so that their resumes could be put into the consideration pile um, next time. And no need to revise the resume line per line. We just have to focus on what are the most impactful changes that they can make um, and, you know, if time permits, we'll, we can probably give an example of how one to two bullet points can be improved if that's a key problematic area for, for a specific resume. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Now we'll look at the toss. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Both of them are live. Okay. I know. Let's, let's get it. Um, so now, even though this was only Anastasia, Anastasia's resume, Emma and Calvin, feel free to chime in your thoughts as well on um, things to improve for this resume. So yeah. maybe we'll... I, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I will say, um, I tend to lean towards keep and look at them a little longer unless they have some really glaring errors. Things are spelled wrong. You don't have any work experience. Um, so I think that's why it ended up that, that 15 seconds, if it wasn't like a, a good impression, definitely in the toss, but all of these had the, the right type of information, um, told us a little bit about yourself. So I think that's probably why it ended up a little lopsided. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I'm the same here. I honestly, honestly, I think it's, it, these resumes are all really great. I mean, again, as I said, if you guys here are on a Sunday participating product buds, you guys are clearly very dedicated to your careers. And that's why I think these resumes are all really good. Um, so I don't think there's any glaring issues, but um, in the, in the, in the, I guess in, in nature of trying to uh, have this workshop be productive, I tried to put, um, put some, put some in the toss bell so we can just improve. But I, as I said, like all these are really, really great, but um, I can start off just kind of a comment I made during the review for this, for this resume. Um, I think a lot of people always try to include skills on their resume, which is a great way to showcase, you know, different systems and courses you've done and um, programs, you know. Um, however, sometimes when you open a resume, usually um, it will, you know, show, show up as half of the page will show up unless you zoom out. So generally the top part of your resume is one of the most kind of like, quote unquote, expensive real estate on your resume. So looking at just like the first quarter of your resume, you really want to gain um, someone's interest or really put in, put in the information that would be most relevant to the position you're applying to. Um, so for me, sometimes when I see skills all listed at the top, I'm not really sure what experience that individual has um, to, you know, to apply to the role. So not necessarily saying that those skills aren't relevant, but I'm just saying, you know, when at first glance, I'm trying to understand, you know, who this person is in 30 seconds, I'm not able to understand that beyond just listing the skills. So for me, I would recommend putting up the experience higher on the resume so we can get that um, uh, get that connection and understanding of who the individual is a little quicker. Yep, I agree. Um, the other thing that kind of stood out to me is, um, and I actually see that in the, in the, in the field resume, even in the resume that, uh, that we kept, is um, be cautious of how many project and, and, uh, and work experience you put into your, into your resume and show and say that it's currently um, it, it's, it's currently working and, and like, you know, even today, like not in present, right? Cause I see that there's one line item right there, work experience is, you know, May 2020 to present. And then like, you know, I look at the leadership on the road, there's three other things down there that is working from November, 2019 to present, right? When I see a lot of things that's going on happening at once, I always question like how dedicated this person can be or like how mm -hmm. much like like how, how much is he really focusing? How can he like, is he focused or is he all over the place, right? So mm -hmm. that's something that, uh, something to keep in mind. Um, Cause I know, I, I saw that there are a lot, there are quite a few that we kept um, earlier that has a lot of, a lot of work experience, but they all say like, you know, from, from past to present, right? And there's like six of them. Um, the other thing kind of, the other thing, um, cause it's going back to what uh, Anastasia was saying is uh, I certainly put experience up top first. As a matter of fact, the other thing that I would, I, you know, th and this is a personal opinion is that I always look for a, um, either a headline or a summary because like that is the first thing I look at like, and I want to know, I want to get to know the person, right? If you graduate from, you know, if, if you graduate from a good university or if you work at a good company before, like state that, like list that. So that, that that's the first thing we call out. Um, cause as, as you know, like, you know, for me is, you know, I, I, I look at, I look at what that with what company had that person look at, uh, worked at before and also like, you know, what university is, has, has, um, did they graduate from? Um, and if you sometimes like, if you put that up top, like that catches the, um, the, um, the hiring manager or the recruiter's eye very quickly. Um, so just a, just a couple of comments there. Mm, yeah. And one of the biggest things for me is uh, not necessarily just the things you're doing, the grades you're getting, but what value are you bringing? So it brings a, a good point when you're saying like, hey, there's a lot of things going on at the same time. What value are, are you bringing to each of these? Mm -hmm. In this particular resume, one thing that stands out to me is um, this, the last part of experience DTLP. 
uh, which is really interesting personally for me because I went through that program at GE and I'm a graduate of that program. Uh, and it's, it's pretty rigorous. You uh, have a lot of different experiences, but the, the real big piece of it is you're going, you're working with different teams because you are going to bring this great value in this outside perspective. Um, so for this, uh, when I read through it, I'm reading, oh yeah, you, you did these things and uh, you became a subject matter expert. You gained knowledge, but what did you give back to that experience? What did you accomplish? And is there a way to quantify that and really show what you did? Mm. Yeah. And then maybe I can add on to that, you know, now that you said, uh, you know, focus the attention on the, D the DLP, um, DTLP, excuse me, um, experience, you know, you, you mentioned that it was really rigorous and you, you know what it was like. But to be honest, like reading through those two bullet points, I, I'm not really understanding that. I'm not really gaining that understanding of what that program did, which I'm sure was, you know, I'm sure they had a lot of value. So adding more, you know, adding more understanding of what kind of impact you had um, within those, within that experience or what kind of impact you had on, on the company within those projects or your team, I think would be a great recommendation for nice steps. Yeah, and then the other thing is, actually for me, um, it would be good to have at least one sentence just describe what the you know, DTLP is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or what what does it do? Like what 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 kind of what kind of uh, um, uh, a program is it? Or like, you know, just some some high level one sentence description. I think that would be great. Which is funny because that's how it's on my resume right now. <laughs> just one sentence and what that program was. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, those are um, amazing insights. And to everyone in the call, you know, there's a lot of really good nuggets of information um, that they're that our speakers are giving. So please take notes and, um, you know, synthesize, summarize your notes and keep it, use it to improve your resume. But also, if you want to add value to others and build on your personal brand, you can share them on LinkedIn as a post and um, if you tag product buzz and if you tag our speakers for today, um, we'll be able to engage with your post and it could um, have a better reach so we can add value to uh, many others, aspiring product managers who were not able to attend today. But something that really stood out, I guess, in what um, you guys said, you know, for Calvin, it's like you're doing this resume seemed like you're doing so many things at once and at the same time. What Emma said, it's not clear what value you're adding. So if you look at the leadership and honor section, I guess my question for the panel here is that would it be better to include less of those um, leadership and honors and instead, you know, maybe leave three or one or three, one to three, and then just have bullet points on what each of those leadership positions or honors mean? Or would you say um, it would be better just listing? kind of all of the honor rolls or leadership positions they've held rather than keeping only a few, but adding context or like a one sentence bullet point on what they've, what value they've added there. What's your opinion on that? So I personally, I would, I would suggest like, just pick the one that you pick the one or two that you're most proud of. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that you are, you are so excited to talk about it, you know, during your interview, if they ask you, um, cause at the end of the day, uh, everyone should be careful what they put in their in the resume, right? Because if you put something in your resume, chances are you, know, you might have to talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you, if, if for whatever reason, like, you know, you put something in the resume and you don't really have much to say about it, then that's a, that, that's a red flag during the, to, during the job interview. Um, so the, the advice there is like, just pick one or two. You don't have to pick, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to be much, but pick one or two that you're really proud of and that you, that you, you, you enjoy the most and then uh, and, and, uh, and, and go from there. Yeah, yeah I just, pick, oh, oh, go ahead, Emma. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, I would agree, pick the ones that you're most proud of, or even the ones that uh, match the type of role that you're applying for. So don't be afraid to have a, a backlog of all of your experiences, your, your honors, your leadership roles, um, and maybe pick and choose when you're getting ready to submit that resume, which ones might match and might stand out and, and make you kind of shine for that role um, and kind of going into that one page versus two page resume maybe you do have a two page resume and you added it to to be a little more specific for for every time you are trying to apply for a role yeah and just just to add to that i think that's those were all really really valid points um i just saw a comment by grace in the in the slack channel it says uh, your resume is a trailer and your interview is a movie 
um, which I think is really, it's an mm -hmm. important point because uh, just because it's not on your resume doesn't mean you can't talk about it in, in your interview. You know, use your resume as something that, as Emma said, tailor it to the position you're applying to. Um, but in, if in, in, during the interview, something comes up that you're involved in that maybe just didn't make it onto that resume or um, for any reason, you can definitely still bring it up in the interview. Um, I think that's a great point to remember that, you know, just because it's not on the resume doesn't mean it's a, it's a goner from there. Mm -hmm. Those are really, really good points. In the, interest of, in the interest of time, we'll move on to our next resume to review, um, which is this one. So um, I'll zoom in a bit and um, I want to keep um, a few minutes for reviewing the key pile because I know we've, we've said um, it would be worth looking back at those as well. So we'll keep um, the roundtable discussion here for five minutes maximum and whoever wants to kick it off, uh, feel free to take the stage, Emma, Calvin or Anastasia. I can start on this one. Uh, I also tossed it. Um, I think, as I kind of said in, in the in the session when I was reviewing it, it's I think you know it's kind of all over the place. This person's in, in interests are all over the place, which isn't terrible at all for me myself. In the past, um, I was someone who had um, internships at a variety of different industries, um, and I think one thing that could tailor all that is kind of like Calvin said, having some kind of um, summary at the top so we know what kind of what position you're applying to or what you're interested in you know for internships a lot of times students put like I'm looking for a summer 2021 internship um, in product management in the energy industry for example that way I know specifically you know what you are applying to or what you're interested in um, that would be one thing I'd probably start off with mm, that's a good one um, Calvin Emma yeah, so from um, just quickly looking at this, um, it's not it's not very clear to me rather this person. So rather this person is applying. So this person is certainly applying for a product, product manager role, but um, um, I, it doesn't seem like he has a lot. He has a lot of experience, but not product experience if you know what I mean like there's not a lot of like things that um that makes me think that this person understand what product management is um because 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 he because I don't, I'm not I'm not getting the sense I'm not getting the like the right keyword I'm not the, the right keyword that um that that I'm looking for because I because when I'm looking at a resume right like in, at least for a product management role I look at I look at I, I look at keywords like you know um, talk to customer like you know there's a you know, customer that conducts a customer interview um, doing some um, 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 feedback uh, customer feedback um, and 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 the product life cycle and things like that um, so I'm not getting I'm, I'm not getting a sense of that so um, so that's kind of one thing that stood out to me immediately. Mm -hmm. And and that kind of makes sense because um, this person I believe is you know, new grad, right? And there's limited PM internships out there, but a lot of demand. So I think this person is trying to transition. But like what you said, Calvin, it would be good for this person to kind of weave in some of those hard product management skills um, to make them stand out to you, to, to show right. that you understand, the, you know, the relevant skills. Of right, because it looks like, yeah, because th this these, um, I guess, it it feels like he is applying. It, it, it feels like he's more of a research role. Like there's a lot of research going on in here, right? And there's not a lot of um, product uh, product experience. And I would say, like you know, if you are if you, if you if you've done a lot of project, right, and then you've done a lot of certain certain experience, tailor your resume to focus on um, for well, focus on applying for a product role. I, I guess um, that's all. I, I guess that's one time to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. That even could go into your uh, the overview that you put on your resume. So you might have relevant skills, even if you come from a different background. Um, but this person that looks like they're in a lab environment, they're probably very organized, uh, probably very detail oriented. And I even see at the bottom, um, they have a publication, which I think is 
awesome. You should show those kind of things off. Um, so I think just kind of mapping, hey, I have these skills because I've had all these experiences and I'm looking to break into the PM space. Um, and just writing that out in plain English and putting it right on top is, is really helpful. Um, the other thing that I'm going to say, and it's because I, this person kind of telling this story of like, hey, they're probably detail oriented, organized, they might transfer their skills into a PM. Um, just make sure everything is really, really clean on your resume. So even things like uh, the tense of the verbs you use. Um, I, I'll notice that right away if you're using past tense for a, something that you're currently doing. Um, mm -hmm. It just makes it sound kind of weird. So make sure you're telling that story about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, one more thing I think we mentioned. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anastasia. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going to say one more thing. Um, we mentioned this on the past resume, um, but I think it's important to note, you know, in each of your bullet points, the way I try to recommend uh, individuals write it out is you start with you know what you did how you did it and then what was the impact and similarly if you look at you know some of the bullet points here it says manage the hotel reservation for about 70 speakers of a conference of 900 attendees that sounds really awesome and that sounds sounds like you know that required a lot of skills um, to execute that's that's a huge group of people um, so let us know you know what was the impact what was the success rate what was the you know um, how many people you know maybe bought that bought a product for or reserved a hotel in the future, you know, what was the impact that your uh, task had? That's a really great point. Quantify as much as possible. How many, how much, um, how often, give them a sense of your responsibility and impact. We have a really good question in the chat that um, I want to quickly um, surface here. So for this resume in particular, does diversity in previous professional experience go against the candidate? Um, maybe uh, Calvin, if you want to take that on, if you. Um, sorry, could you ask that one more time? Does diversity in previous professional experience go against the candidate if they are applying for a PM role? I think they're talking about if their like resume is like yeah. varied. Yeah. Y yeah. Yeah. I would. For me personally, I would say yes, right, because. As a, when, I, when I hire a product manager on, on the team, I, I want to look for um, people that has product experience that have done some experience before, right? Um, but if you, if, if, if um, I, you know, I have, I'm not just be like for complete transparency, I have not um, hired anybody for internship groups. So that might be different. But like, you know, if you're asking me, it's like, you know, if I would hire, you know, if, if, if the diversity of, of different experience would affect you know, their product management role, as it won't as long as it can showcase very clearly, right? What skills that he has, what what skills that this person has done that can that 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 uh, that, that that this person can leverage, you know, for his um, product experience. I don't know, I don't think that's that would be okay. But if you have um, a diverse of experience, but they're not um, clear. Um, it's not clear to me how they are all related to product management, then I would say that that would be a, that would, would be a no for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anastasia, did you want to uh, quickly add your thought there? Yeah, I will say, I think for, you know, looking at this resume in, a, in an internship perspective, I don't think it hurts to have a variety of different experiences. I'm someone, again, as I said, who had a variety of different experiences going in, um, going into, you know, both internships and full-time. So I don't think that hurts uh, by any means. I think when you, when you are looking at, you know, transitioning and making it into a product management role, kind of like Calvin and Emma said, tailor your resume, showcase the skills that are typically, um, you know, looked for in a PM role, showcase those skills within your resume. So when you're talking about managing hotel reservations, what does that have to do with, what does that have to do or how could that be relevant for when you're in that product experience? So, not, so change that bullet point to, with, uh, change that bullet point with the lens of a product manager. How would a product manager, um, you know, make that similar, I guess, like how could that experience be relevant in a PM role? So that's what I would say. Um, I don't think it hurts at all. Just make sure that when you're applying, your resume or application is tailored for you to make that next step. So it's really easy for the recruiter to understand the story that you, you're coming from. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. In the interest of time, we do have a lot of questions um, going into Slido. So we'll, we'll jump in there um, and we'll start with 
um, Emma there. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly present um, the questions we have on Slido. So for everyone in the call, um, go to slido.com. And if you type hashtag buds, um, you'll be able to access this and vote your top questions because we'll be answering those things. So number one, uh, how to stand out if you don't have big company names on your resume? Ooh, <laughs> juicy yeah. question. Right, a, a big company name or a big school name will always you know, catch someone's eye, but that's not the only thing we're gonna look for. So it's, it's really getting into what experience you have and again, what value you're, you're gonna bring. Um, show that you're passionate, show that you have some experience, even if not directly in product management, um, you can still stand out with a, a really nice resume. Uh, yeah. Okay, show, show, show the value even though it's not direct. Um, it's not a big brand. As, as long as you make your bullet points um, quantifiable, shows your impact, then you can stand out. Cool, we'll move on to the next question. Um, we can go with um, Calvin. Does having a personal website that you create make a difference when applying to PM roles? Um, I would say, I would say no, um, only because, because your resume itself should should or should should call out all your work work experience, and I don't think you need a personal website for it. But like you know, but if you do have any um, specific you know article or publication that that are very popular, um, I would definitely list it in your resume, um, because just because you put your website on your resume, you know, it doesn't mean that, uh, chances are the, the recruiter or the hiring manager won't go there and look at it. Because I, I I've seen a lot of resume that has their you know their website under and. I've never been to any one of them. Um, just mm -hmm. um, so, so, but, but, no, but, um, but if you, but if, but if that person, if I, if I, if that person has passed multiple rounds interview, then of course mm -hmm. I'll go in and, 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 and go look at it later. Right. Cause then, then, cause then, then, then for me, it's just, I want to get to know this person more. Okay. That's a really good insight. If you do, uh, if you are applying to a role that's a little more specialized, um, maybe you're interested in design and you have a portfolio or you're more technical and you have a GitHub link, those um, I think do stand out. Uh, I do have a background in design and have a portfolio and I don't advertise it on my PM resumes or when I apply to PM roles, but it has been found before, even if I don't share it because it's my name uh, and it, it ends up. Uh, working out, even if that doesn't really put me over the edge, um, it's just something that it doesn't hurt to have. Mm, it's not a make or break, but it's a good compliment. Next question. How do you beat ATS for resume screening? So perfect for Anastasia. <laughs> yes, um, ATS. I think it's a, always a hot topic. Um, I think a post by Madeline Mann, I believe on LinkedIn, she recently posted about how you don't worry so much about the ATS as much as worrying as you know, tailoring your resume to your story. And I think that's really true because I think a lot of people get caught up on how do I break the ATS system? How do I make my resume um, better for the ATS system? So people go, you know, for me, I really prefer PDFs and most hiring managers do. So if you go apply um, with the hopes of being the ATS system with like a Word document, um, I have to go and convert your, P convert your Word doc into a PDF, which requires a lot more work on my end. Um, and just something of a hassle. And of course, I'll go do it if I think the candidate is, you know, super well qualified. But I think at the end of the day, don't worry too much about breaking the ATS system. Um, uh, you know, there are certain things that, you know, might help, might help with the ATS system. But at the end of the day, just remember that, you know, everything we've talked about um, into building and the advice we've given to build your resume to be successful on the past, ex uh, past examples that we've shown, just make sure you apply those um, and the ATS system will favor you. Mm. What about um, using design tools like Canva? So, you know, making your resume more creative and um, aesthetically pleasing, does that go against the ATS system, um, Anastasia? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily know how the specific algorithm works, but I would just say um, if, the, if the recruiter can look at your resume um, 
and we can use keyword search keyword searches to find you know relevant experience on your resume that's all that matters if you prefer um i personally don't prefer a designed resume just because i think sometimes it's hard to um, understand the relevant experience and sometimes i think people focus more on the design than the value of their experiences and you know spend more time on the design elements or take up more white space of the design elements versus focusing on their experience. So I personally don't prefer it, but I have seen it done really well. So it's kind of up to personal preference. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. What kinds of academic, professional, extracurricular experiences show aptitude for skills you look for in PM? Um, this might be more of an Emma or Calvin question. Yeah, one of the things that I definitely look for are leadership roles, whether it's professional, mm -hmm. if you're in athletics, in your academics. Uh, PMs are very often uh, either leaders indirectly or directly to a group of people. So showing those kinds of skills is really important. Um, and also showing your passion and not being afraid to kind of throw yourself out there. What have you participated in? What awards have you won? Um, what makes you not just a person who uh, joins things, but kind of stands out and shines and puts that effort into it? Yeah, I agree. Leadership roles. So yeah. we'll skip this um, question because we want to make this focus on resume. This is more of a networking question, um, but another hot topic one. So we have a lot of transitioners who want to break into a PM. Does taking online PM courses um, add value to someone's resume if they're trying to break into the field? I can, I can start and Emma Cowan, yeah. feel free to jump in. Um, but I think, I think it's great. I think you definitely, if you have the time, um, always skill up during this, you know, any available time you have always great to skill up. But I would say the, the kind of the, the place where those courses, you know, really have an advantage for your experience and your next role is how you apply those skills. Similarly to what we mentioned on the resume, if you just list all those skills, we, as a recruiter or hiring manager, we're not understanding, you know, where you apply those skills, how you apply them, and how we can see that you apply those skills within, within the, the company we're hiring for. So similarly, if you can apply those skills um, and lessons you learn from Coursera or Udemy, um, and you can apply them, just showcase them. And I think that's, that's a great way to do it. Okay, I see a few nods. So we are at a consensus. Um, this one for CJ, I always have problems with quantitative metrics for my resume. Sometimes I just don't have the data. Any tips? I would, I would first ask why won't you have the data? Um, and I would say when you, when you work in a project, like start off by just asking yourself, you know, how do I measure the success of this project? Right. Use use, you know, use, use objective, you know, um, key result to measure it. Um, I always, I always suggest people to use OKR to track to even on personal project. I, I, I always suggest them to use OKR because at the end of the day, when you define your OKR on your project, like that's that, that will help you um, get some quantitative number, right. And put it on the resume. Um, because a lot of times like, you know, if you have trouble, you know, getting that data, chances are you're not really thinking about it. Um, that's kind of my, um, my, my opinion on that. Emma, you were going to say something. Yeah, one of the things that um, if it's hard, maybe start with scale. So uh, mm -hmm. you're working on something and you know that product is used by 10,000 people. Um, that already is a number that's going to be like, oh yeah, this is in people's hands. It, it's meaningful. Um, so it might not even start with things that you just know about your product space or the, around your project um, and, and go from there. Even if you can't directly measure it, it'll come to you after you start pulling some of those numbers out. Anastasia, any insight there? Um, I think, you know, that, that this can be a challenge, especially in internships, because you're only at a company for a short period amount of time. So I, I can attest that this can be difficult. Um, but I think as Emma said, she, she nailed it, you know, start with, you know, scalability, start with, you know, Versus if you're not able to understand, you know, how, what, what kind of impact your project has. Um, I'd also say sometimes estimating is okay. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. you know, be, be ready to explain that in an interview. Um, don't fib your numbers and don't, don't lie about them. Um, but, you know, start, start with an estimate can be, can be fine, I'd say. And also scalability numbers such as 
how many stakeholders you're working with um, and such. Yeah, how big of a team, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So we are actually reaching time. So that would be our last question. Um, but I want to thank um, the speakers for taking their time um, on a weekend afternoon to spend you know spend time with us and drop some really good knowledge how's everyone feeling to kind of close off i wanted um to ask the speakers you know there's a lot of questions that we didn't go through but if any of our members would want to reach out to you and would want to continue the conversation how are they able to do that so how can they best contact you yeah let's start with anastasia yeah, you can message me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty pretty active on LinkedIn. Not so much on the weekends because I try try to get out uh, get out of the house on the weekend. But I will respond. If I don't respond, um, I'm not trying to ignore you. I promise. Um, just message me again and bump the message. Back. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, same for me. LinkedIn message, and I uh, am also pretty active in messaging. Maybe not as much as posting as I should be, but uh, I will definitely get back to you. And Calvin? Yeah, LinkedIn is a is the best place. And I'll, I'll I'll give out my email to you. It's Calvin at calvinchen.net. So pretty simple, um, easy to remember. So feel free to email me as well. That's great. And they're also part of our Slack community. So um, you can also reach out to them um, via that. But thank you, everyone. We're one minute over. Um, really, really happy and excited that you guys came out here and you how proactive you are in, you know, elevating your career as aspiring or even early career PM. So um, like what we said earlier, take the insights that you gained today, that you gained today, put it in a LinkedIn post and tag our speakers, add value to them. They took their time to share these knowledge with you. Um, amplify their personal brand and um, amplify yours as well by sharing that, um, by showing how well you can synthesize notes and add value to your LinkedIn network by sharing your insights. So thank you all and we look forward to seeing you in our future events. And all of these will be posted on our YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed, head on to um, YouTube and just search um, product buds and will be the first thing that pops up. Yes. Thank you so much, Henrika, Anastasia, Emma, and Calvin for this amazing session. And also final reminder for anyone who wants feedback on your resume, go to the resume review channel on the product buds Slack and not only post your resume, but make sure to drop your feedback for other resumes in that channel as well. Just as much as you want to have feedback, others want that feedback as well. So please help one another out. And we're very excited to continue seeing you at more of our future events. Yeah, so thank you for, you know, more than 100, for you, 100 of you for sticking around. Thank you and so thanks, much, Thanks back to you guys. Thanks for organizing a great event. Um, thanks for inviting me. Of course. Thank yeah. you so much. All Bye, right. guys. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.